Christian fiction has a tendency to very quickly reach the wacky concept territory in their efforts to make engaging stories to say the least. There are some concepts that actually end up working amazingly and go on to become phenomenal Christian fictional work and then there are others that well just don't hit the mark is the best way to put it. So I'll let you be the judge of this one because in a super powered world where a select group of Christian superheroes are sent on a God given mission to free John the Apostle from the Vatican to aid them in the fight against the Antichrist, our band of God fearing heroes range from a flame headed master swordsman to a man in a high tech B suit. There is something wrong with the world but people just can't see it. I started out a humble beekeeper and became alarmed by the dwindling bee population. My research led me to a vast conspiracy by the United Nations to control the planet. Afraid of the secrets being exposed, they sent agents to silence me and left me for dead, or so they thought. I was awakened by the messenger called Grok, who encouraged me to take the fight to the enemy. Now I fight for evil as the hero bzzzt, yes it's bzzzt. Watch out UN, I am coming for you. And as ridiculous as that song did, that is actually one of the easily understandable things about this comic series because I have seen crazier things in the previous issues. But make no mistake, this isn't some Marvel or DC attempt at a Christian superhero comic flick or some cheesy cringy preachy Christian attempt at a Marvel style comic. In my honest opinion, the series has been well crafted and the story strikes the perfect balance of being really entertaining and over the top with moments that definitely make you go WHAT a lot of times while also being extremely edifying without falling into the stigma of most modern Christian fiction. This is actually the 8th installment of our coverage of the Revenant comic book series. So if you are interested then why not consider leaving a like on it and even subscribing for our continued coverage of the series along with other Christian and non-Christian fictional stories with emphasis on those that have comic panels like this. I came in thinking the Celestials were disappointed in us. They wanted a holy war, some proof of loyalty. I came hoping we would find evidence that we should slaughter these heretical Avengers. I was wrong. This is all true. And there is no blasphemy in our false church. I spent one million years following a religion that was no such thing. It was a way to brainwash us to do their duty. We are all living scripture, but that scripture itself is blasphemous. And it occurs to her, who judges the gods? The prophesied rapture of the Christians have occurred. Millions of people have disappeared from the earth without warning. The newly appointed world leader has taken control of earth's governments. With his enforcers, the watchers, the world has become a very different place. What follows are excerpts from Grok, the leader of the Remnant's journals. These journals are very critical to the currently covert Christians who are now being hunted for their beliefs and rejection of the tyrannical antichrist Apollyon. So before going forward, let's cover the style of the Secret Files comics when compared to the mainline remnant issues and more traditional comic series. Secret Files is a collection of short stories, origins and explanations of the remnant universe merged into a single comic book rather than being one cohesive story like any regular comic book. So if it seems like I'm jumping all around the place, it is because I am literally jumping all around the place. <laughs> and our first hero info card is none other than Grok, the leader of the Remnant. In a previous issue, we learned about his history and backstory along with his coming out story. Yeah, it's actually not what you may think and I highly recommend you check out that video after this one. Grok is an ordinary guy thrust into the extraordinary. Although Grok is one of the most powerful members of the task force, he is also the most humble of them all. This is most likely the reason that he has chosen to gather the team and lead them against the enemy. Grok has a wide array of powers which are generated by the angels at gauntlets and the suit he wears. Grok is able to open up portals to any destination he can think of or has spatial coordinates for. Grok can generate low level perception fields and store objects in quantum pockets. Grok also possesses the supernatural gift of prophecy and discernment. The next hero on the list is Salthawk. 
who wears a suit which contains Raythorn's X-Metal woven into it. This grants Southwark powers of gravity negation, enabling him to fly. His mechanical wings also provide help with acceleration and flight control. Hawk's Gauntlet fire a low-level energy blast as well. Next, we have a log entry from none other than John Fisher himself, aka Bist. I am going to Bist until the author of the comic or someone corrects me and says it's not Bist or BZZT or whatever it is. I am going with Bist, so you're going to have to hear me struggle to say Bist every time I see BZZT in any Remnant comic book. I'll admit, I'm not the funnest guy to be around. Everyone tells me that I am much too serious. I just realized what a mess the world is in, like conspiracies, misdirection, and utter evil in high places. I felt so helpless and like there was nothing that could be done. I understand that these things have to happen, it all has been foretold, but I decided to stand up and do my part to combat the wickedness. I was blessed to have Grok introduce me to the Tribulation Task Force. Tech 9 helped me to design and create this great battle suit. Yeah, it's a bit corny, you know, a grown man flying around like a giant bee, but it has meaning to me. This all started because a beekeeper was aware of the severe dip in the bee population. Upon research, I began to uncover the plant of an elite cabal to control the food production of the country. They weren't too happy about that and sent their enforcers to try to kill me. I owe my life to the Tribulation Task Force for being faithful to God and the work he assigned them. Maybe I should relax a bit and enjoy the time with the like-minded friends and allies. You just can't ask for anything better. Sometimes life is really good. Like the other members of the Tribulation Squad, Bizt wears a battle suit powered by the mystical metal given by God, the X-Metal. The metal absorbs ambient atmospheric Tesla particles and converts them to various forms of energy. Bizt's suit, which was specifically designed by Raythorn, grants the user bee-like powers. Yes, he has bee-like powers as well, people. Such as supersonic flight, I do not know any bee with supersonic flight. Wings capable of making air splitting buzz songs, I know about that. And his wrist launcher can shoot pain inducing stingers. That's really cool actually. Other capabilities may be discovered as Bizd learns how to operate his new suit. Bizd definitely takes the award by a landslide for the most ridiculous Christian superhero I've come across. And I absolutely love it. Next on the list are the Friends of Justice. News America presents our Friends of Justice. As the evil Hitler's Nazi army scourge blazing through Europe, America enters the war to aid our allies in battle. After months of fighting, President Eisenhower enacts the boldest plan to date. Our Commander-in-Chief enlists the aid of our superpower Friends of Justice to help turn the tide of war. Watch out Nazi scum, the friends of justice are on the job. Whenever I read anything like that, that has to do with World War II and Hitler and Nazis and like any piece of fiction, I am always reminded of this meme. The Germans had to fight Wolverine, Captain America, Transformers, Wizards and more in World War II. No wonder they lost. This is actually one of my favorite like memes I've come across. I'm looking at comic sense stuff. It's just like, yeah. I mean, I did hope they lose in any way, take it, but like, no wonder they lost. Clay Carter grew up in a military family. Because of his poor eyesight, he was disqualified from service in the army. Determined to hold up his family legacy, Clay participated in a classified project by an American Nazi group. After receiving his new abilities, Clay, now man of war, betrayed the group and turned them into the CIA. Impressed with his character, the president enlisted him to form a team of heroes to aid in the war. Man of War has no natural abilities. Due to the experimentation and exposure to wars, Man of War rays developed by Nazi scientists clearly developed enhanced abilities. Man of War can run at three times the speed of a normal man, he can leap great distances and has superhuman strength. Because of the experimentation, Man of War ages at a rate slower than most people. Ariana Sanchez, aka Trash Polka, is a black belt in Taekwondo and has learned skills from other fighting disciplines. Trash Polka uses innovative low-tech items to assist her in crime fighting. 
she has been known to throw blackout balls with a tattoo ink to temporarily blind her opponents. Sharp throwing objects that contain sedation properties and low impact rubber bullets to stun opponents. Ariana is a second generation American who grew up in a poor family. Ariana was bullied in school because of the way she dressed and because of her family's financial situation. Ariana's father enrolled her in a taekwondo class to help her build confidence and be able to defend herself if needed. Ariana's instructor was also a master tattoo artist and eventually Ariana became his apprentice. Ariana became interested in helping other women who were struggling and worked in a domestic violence shelter. So moved by the women she encountered, she became a costume vigilante to get justice for the woman she sued. Next up is Shami Amor, who the next video will actually be about covering his solo story as well. Black Cobra is an international Christian missionary who travels to places that have not been previously explored by the modern world. Over his career, he has made huge inroads with many lost tribes. While on a mission with a remote African tribe, he was bit by a poisonous snake. Because the snake was unknown to the medical professionals, there was no treatment. Instead of being fatal, the venom changed Shaman's body chemistry granting him superhuman abilities. Black Cobra possesses an impressive array of superhuman strength. Shaman can generate venom-like blasts of energy. Black Cobra has enhanced strength, speed, and vision and is able to camouflage himself. However, this does take high level of concentration and will power. Robotron possesses a level A10 intelligence which grows with every encounter. Robotron is able to fire plasma blasts from his hands and uses his weight to increase the power of his punches. However, he does try to avoid physical confrontations as much as possible. Robotron was born when a rogue scientist at an AI think tank built a prototype biological tech AI. Dubbed the Robotron, the AI evolved faster than the scientists envisioned, and it went on to construct a new body and kill its creator. Apollyon, who was an investor in the project, convinced the now sentient AI to join his cause. Daniel aka Raythorn is a brilliant inventor who has created products that have sold billions. Despite his success, he chooses to remain under the radar and quiet. A humble man, he wears his hat on his sleeve. Daniel has a fun personality and a great sense of humor, especially in times of stress. Raythorn suits derives its power from the glowing metal stripes that absorb ambient free-floating energy sources such as ultraviolet, song waves, and cosmic energy and converts them to energy. Next up is none other than my personal favorite hero by design, Thief in the Night, who is actually my wallpaper currently for my phone. My name is Eli Royalty Cadwell, champion MMA fighter. After tragedy struck my family, I spent months in a deep depression. My best friend Jolene helped me reconnect with my faith. During the counseling process, Jolene revealed to me he was a hero known as Southhawk. As I worked through the depression, I also began a new training program, not for MMA fighting, but my new identity as a superhero. Now I devote my life to serving others as a thief in the night. And yes, it is based directly off of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 2 which says, For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Thief in the night wears a lightweight body armor that incorporates Rathon's X-Metal to power it. The night suit enhances Eli's strength. The goggles on the mask provide enhanced vision capabilities including infrared, night vision and an array of other functions. The suit contains an onboard computer linked to the Tribulation Squad's base computer which is controlled by panels on the suit's gauntlets. Thief in the Night is capable of short range flight and in his pouch he carries a variety of tools and support items. Apollyon, the soon to be Antichrist. We already did an entire origin on Apollyon in the Secret Files issue 3 video but in this video we are given his powers. Apollyon has light based powers as well as arcane abilities. Apollyon's powers manifest in the form of heavenly powered light blast and his favorite manifestation is a fiery arrow which shoots from his golden bow. Blog Entry The Watcher's Red Baptism In the antediluvian world, the rogue angel Azazel wreaked havoc on the earth. 
he taught the humans forbidden arts of magic. Among his wicked exploits was the mixing of genes. He mixed angel with human and other demented works. He recorded all of his exploits in a journal. The journal was handed down through time and maintained by an ancient cult of Nephilim. Rumors say that King Solomon viewed the book and engaged in some of the arcane spells contained within it. The book was passed on to Apollyon, who has begun to put some of the forbidden knowledge into practice. The resurrection of dead Nephilim has been his passion project. Hiring elite project paperclip survivors and the world's most notorious scientists, Apollyon has cloned superhuman bodies. To fill these bodies with the spirit, he used Azazel's Red Baptism ritual. The Red Baptism is performed by submerging a human or soulless husk into the Red Blood Pool. The pool contains demonic entities and lost spirits of deceased Nephilim. When submerged, the participant agrees to swear their eternal loyalty to Apollyon and, in return, Satan himself. The participant emerges from the baptism with superhuman abilities courtesy of the demonic entity now soul attached. The process is painful and produces an acute sense of terror. The newly emerged Epps, enhanced superperson, is eternally lost and unredeemable. What the participants do not realize is that not only have they submitted their souls, but also their free will, as Apollyon can impose his will and desire on the Epps. Cairo de Angelis, aka the second Blue Scarab, uses a modified version of the original Blue Scarab Vitamin K, which grants him super speed and strength. His costume was one of his mentor's experimental designs which stores solar energy and converts it to powerful directed energy blasts. Cairo migrated to America from Italy at the age of 6. Because his parents worked so much, Cairo spent a lot of time with his neighbor Dan Garrett. Dan became a mentor and surrogate father to Cairo. Shortly before passing, Dan revealed to Cairo his secret identity as a blue scarab. Dan trained Cairo and upon his death, Cairo assumed the moniker of Blue Scarab as tribute to his mentor. The final info card for this issue is Rob McNeil, a retired military and law enforcement and lifelong martial artist specializing in Koyakushin Karate along with many Thai and Judo fighting styles. Ron is also a semi-professional bodybuilder and powerlifter, a domestic and foreign weapon specialist with 10 years of combat experience and living in austere conditions. Rob spent 14 years in the US Army and was medically discharged due to injuries sustained during the invasion of Iraq in 2003. He was able to tough it out until 2015. Rob was deployed four times to Iraq, once in Afghanistan and served two years in South Korea. His last seven years was spent in special operation forces which contributed to further his skills. Rob is now into law enforcement and his time as MP in the army helps him perform that job. He has a family who he loves very much, however he isn't sure if he's strong enough to protect them considering the erupting conflicts all over the world. Rob has been attempting to find his faith after feeling that he may have lost it while in wars. Part of the Remnant crowdfunding campaign strategy is a $100 tier where persons can submit their own original heroes to be featured in the Secret Files books as a Tribulation Task Force ally, which is something I personally want to do eventually in the future once you boy liquid now. <laughs> in this issue, we have The Tinker, Sunny Strings, Lar Omega, Pest, and Tim Slag Boss. Eventually, I plan to cover all the Tribulation Task Force allies in their own separate video. Not separate video each, but actually like going through all of them in a separate video, eventually. But now, let's get into my honest rating of this issue using our channel's Christian Fiction Judgment Scheme. For the story, it's a 3 out of 5 for me. Compared to the other Secret Files books, there wasn't much of a story at all but just info cards, which was pretty cool. And it's nice to know more about the heroes and even the villains of the Remnant, even to get to know some of what their actual powers are. 
For artwork and creativity, it's a 5 out of 5. I personally believe Remnant Art matches the industry standard quality of other popular comic series. And some of the artists, to my knowledge, actually worked on Marvel and DC Comics, but they also accept freelance commissions. The theological basis, which refers to how well core Christian principles and theology as well as scripture is adopted into a Christian fictional work, 3 out of 5. The Remnant is the perfect example for me personally of Christian fiction for young adults done right. Even though at first glance it seems like it would be some unbiblical yet intentionally quoting scripture mess like a lot of modern non-Christian comics are that we have covered on this channel, other than the intro, this issue didn't really have any theological stuff at all and it simply was all about Euro cards and what their powers were. So it gets a 3 out of 5 in this department for simply being alright, especially when compared to the other issues that went, like the previous issue that we did on the Remnant issue 2, that was like, that was top tier Christian fiction with John in the armor of God quoting scripture every panel. It was amazing. So to go from that to this is like, eh, it isn't bad, but it also isn't amazing either. It's just, you know, in the middle. And lastly, for the final category, being my enjoyment and how likely I am to recommend it to someone is a 1 out of 5. Any comic with continuous spelling or formatting errors is an automatic tool on my judgment scale for me personally, which the Secret Files books have a track record for being a 2 out of 5. But this comic gets a 1 out of 5 because really and truly out of the 8 I have read from the series thus far, it is entirely skippable. Like most of the information was rehashed with nicer visual displays from previous comics. The only new takeaways from this issue was how Beast works and Thief in the Night's backstory as well as Black Cobra's powers and the introduction of Rob McNeil who I have no idea who he is because he has never appeared in any of the issues I have read thus far. So this issue is really skippable and one of the things that Remnant gets like what I really love about Rem the Remnant is that the way how they introduce characters or the way how the story goes it's so profound that you are able to follow even if you like isolate a story isolate one comic and just read it you completely at least for me personally you completely understand what's going on how their powers work what they do the conflict between the enemy and stuff like that it's it's really well written in my opinion so this issue doesn't really add anything to that all the other secret files added a nice under like what was going on in the background of the mainline stories but this one it's just like you could completely skip it and it, it doesn't really add anything when compared to secret files one to three so far i mean i'm not saying don't buy it i'm all for lining the pockets of christian creators who are actually doing the actually doing the work of making christian fiction and giving my honest opinion on their work because i want to see a lot more christian fiction and i am all for supporting these christian fictional writers and like fam i just want you guys to line their pockets because i mean <laughs> really and truly i just love the work but i mean from an unbiased, not wanting you to buy every single Remnant comic perspective, you could honestly completely skip this comic. But that doesn't give you an excuse to skip it. Buy it. Like, buy it. <laughs> but overall, Tribulation Task Force Secret Files number 4 gets a 3 out of 5 from the explanations. Let me know what you think of the comment based on what was discussed in the comments below. Links to purchase the Remnant comics will be in the description. As my breakdown, even though I say you could skip it and stuff, will never be able to do the full story and artwork justice, as well as encouraging you to support and buy these Christian alternatives to the current landscape of fiction that is progressively getting worse and we're not just talking about review scores, but also blatantly twist the word of God and introduce all manners of things into the stories that even non-Christians are sick and tired of. If you enjoyed the video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more videos like these 
that are aimed to push these comics that actually present great Christian values and messages in an entertaining way that for me personally doesn't come across as cringy or too preachy. But that's not all you'll find on the channel, as we also do live streams creating small scale video games inspired by Christian fictional stories and biblical events. If you would like to come and check it out, then we are live on Wednesdays making some games in the Fortnite Unreal Editor and on Fridays continuing our The Pilgrim Progress inspired video game. If you enjoyed the video to the point you are looking to check out another one of our videos, then you can click the card at the top right hand corner of your screen to continue down the ramp and playlist or you can check out this video on why I think Christian fiction sucks but with comics like the Remnant it is slowly getting better.